Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Law 9 of 2022, amending Article 1 of Decree Law 27 of 2015 concerning the Commercial Register. The National Guard Commander, His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, participated as a guest of honour in a celebration held by the Pakistani Army on the occasion of Pakistan's Independence Day, in the presence of the President of Pakistan's senior military officials and guests. His Highness congratulated the President and the people of Pakistan on this occasion and praised the military performances presented by the Pakistani Army with the participation of a number of friendly countries. His Highness praised the bilateral relations and the strong cooperation and coordination witnessed in many fields, particularly the military field. Members of the National Guard also participated in the military parade held on this occasion as part of the cooperation protocol signed between the National Guard and the Pakistani Army, an affir affirmation of the depth of relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and Pakistan. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Al Mawayed, who presented to His Highness the Ministry's team that won the Best Arab Government Project Award for Youth Empowerment, Creating Elites. His Highness praised the achievements of the Bahraini youth at all levels, thanks to the wise directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, who was keen in supporting the youth of the Kingdom. His Highness also appreciated the role of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in contributing to enhancing the skills of the youth continuously. His Highness added that this achievement is proof of the development of the programmes and initiatives presented to the youth. He hailed the role of the Ministry in enhancing the role of the youth and honing their skills which resulted in this achievement and many other achievements in many fields. He added that the Ministry created a generation of youth that is able to enhance the development march and raise the status of the Kingdom, regionally and internationally. His Highness praised the Bahraini experience in empowering the youth and praised the efforts of the Minister in this regard, as well as the work team who contributed to raising the status of the Kingdom. He stressed the importance of continuing the efforts and setting up more programmes and initiatives to empower the youth in order to create more accomplishments. Al Mawayed affirmed that this achievement is thanks to the support of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness and added that the Ministry was keen on translating the strategy of His Highness Sheikh Nasser to empower the youth. He also praised the follow-up and contributions of the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympics Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa in this regard. The Representatives Council Speaker Fazea Zanal met Egypt's House of Representatives Speaker Chancellor Dr Hanafi al Ghali, Moroccan House of Representatives Speaker Dr Rashid Talibi al Alami, a Maltese House of Representatives Speaker Angelo Farudia, and the sidelines of the 144th General Assembly of the Inter-Parliamentary Union. 
Zanal affirmed that Bahraini parliamentary diplomacy adopts solid methods and foundations to confirm the Kingdom's position on regional and international levels, noting the importance of parliamentary cooperation between all countries to support development plans. She highlighted the progress led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and emphasised the legislative branch and its active position in the parliamentary unions in promoting parliamentary work at all levels. The Council of Representatives Speaker for Zay Zanal met the South Korean National Assembly Speaker Park Byung Seong during a participation in the 144th Interparliamentary Union, the IPU Assembly. The Speaker praised the Bahraini South Korean relations and stressed the keenness of the cooperation in trade and investment. She affirmed support for the economic and investment between the two countries and praised the progress of relations that extended for more than four decades, thanks to the support of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa and President of South Korea, Yung Suk Yeol. The South Korean speaker expressed his pride in historical bilateral relations and the keenness to develop them in all fields. He praised the growth and prosperity witnessed by the Kingdom thanks to the leadership of His Majesty the King. The Parliamentary Division delegation participated in the general discussion of the Gender Partnership Group to review women's participation in parliamentary delegations and in parliaments that are IPU members. During the meeting of the Committee to Promote Respect for International Humanitarian Law, the delegations discussed the follow-up of the Global Agreement on Refugees, recent developments regarding statelessness, conflicts and war that the refugees are exposed to. During the meeting of the Standing Committee on UN Affairs, the delegation submitted a proposal to establish a permanent committee of administrators working in national parliaments with UN organisations to enhance communication, cooperation and coordination on issues and topics at the global level. The delegation also met with a number of Arab Parliament's General Secretaries and stressed the development witnessed by the support systems provided by Parliament's General Secretariats reflect the keenness in highlighting the legislative work. And during the meeting of the Standing Committee on Democracy and Human Rights, the delegation discussed the measures taken by Bahrain in implementing precautionary measures to address the pandemic. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, took part in the meeting of the ministerial session of the Organisation of Islamic Cooperation and the role of the Islamic world in promoting peace, justice and harmony. In a statement, the Minister of Foreign Affairs stressed that the Islamic world faces many challenges, which comes in the way of the role it plays in international issues that threaten international peace and security, or those that threaten human life. He said that the Islamic world is able to play a prominent and effective role in promoting peace, justice and harmony in the whole world. The Minister added that it is the duty of the Islamic countries to work on reforming the relations, addressing problems and differences wherever they may exist and resolving them. He called for the uniting of efforts of member states to combat the ideology of fanaticism and sectarianism which fuels terrorist organisations that have pursued terrorism to distort the image of Islam and offend her beliefs values and principles. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Kyrgyzstan, Ruslan Karabayevon, on the sidelines of the 48th Organisation of Islamic Cooperation Council of Foreign Mem Ministers in Islamabad. The meeting reviewed the bilateral relations between Bahrain and Kyrgyzstan and the constant development and growth they are witnessing at various levels. The two sides also discussed means to enhance and develop aspects of cooperation and joint coordination for the benefit of the two friendly countries and peoples. The Minister of Housing, Engineer Basim bin Yaqub Al Hamar visited a Lazi housing pro project which is included in the Government Land Rights Development Programme. He affirmed that the Ministry is working to strengthen its partnership with the private sector to provide innovative housing options and solutions to provide housing units to citizens. The Minister said that the acceleration of implementing such projects by private sector companies enhances confidence in the success of this programme and affirms the success of the Ministry and the Housing Bank in qualifying real estate development and contracting companies. He explained that the Ministry's plans come to diversifying housing options in accordance with the Government's directives which stem from the objectives of Bahrain's economic vision 2030. He indicated that a lousy project includes the implementation of 132 housing units and secondary infrastructure works. 
We also noted that the Ministry is keen to search for innovative solutions to increase the supply of housing services and products. Alhamar added that the Ministry aims to build 19,000 housing units and government lands, noting that the project targets citizens wishing to benefit from the Mazaya programme and other housing finances provided by the Ministry. The Minister of Housing Engineer Basim Alhamar affirmed that the Gulf Real Estate Exhibition has become an important annual event for all parties related to the real estate sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Praising the diversifying of fields offered by the exhibition, including construction and design. He added that the participation of the Ministry of Housing and the Eskan Real Estate Company in the Gulf Real Estate Exhibition comes within the framework of the policy of introducing the housing efforts provided by the government to citizens and promoting social housing projects provided by the Housing Bank, in addition to highlighting the programmes and initiatives adopted by the Ministry in which it aims to provide innovative housing solutions to serve a large segment of citizens' requests on waiting lists and achieve their aspirations to obtain appropriate housing. The seventh edition of CC Forum Middle East closed yesterday with a mission to enhance investment sustainability, bringing together top business leaders, policy makers and public figures to discuss current challenges including climate change, fossil fuel based economies, overpopulation and poverty. In accordance with sustainable development goals set by the United Nations, the event topic centre around investing in environment, renewable energies, emerging technologies, healthcare, education, social inclusion and philanthropy. The aim of the 7th edition of the CC Forum is exploring the prospects, challenges and business opportunities of investment in sustainable development as the world has been recovering from the pandemic. Bahrain with its history 5,000 before Christ and sustainability is one of the most important things in the agenda of His Majesty the King, the Vision 2030. So we are going in line with that. So if you take the CC Forum, CC Climate Change, then Carbon Credit, okay, and then Connectivity and Contact, communication and the last one is uh, it just slipped from my mind but then if you go and take Bahrain I always say about Bahrain it has the four H the history the heritage the hospitality and the humanity that's how Bahrain is in four pillars if you take any of the table or any chair you'll find there is four pillars so Bahrain is in that. And the ruling family of Al Khalifa, 256 years, they have done Bahrain what it is today. What we've been doing, uh, and that's the mission and ethos of CC Forum really, we've been putting together the savviest of the investors with the brightest of the startups. And we're really, really proud that such startups as we're well, now world known, like Carbfix, freezing carbon dioxide from within the air and storing it like nuggets of gold, or growing rice in the desert, or uh, turning food waste into alternative diesel fuel. These have always been either launched at CT Forum's editions or highlighted or, or showcased. So we're enormously proud of that. So it's of absolutely paramount importance that we all uh, work together. We are an investment company and an accelerator for all the startups who are future-oriented industries, all the projects about uh, renovating our new future and then building our future. And we are investing in, in all, all the areas, but with the topics and with the heart by sustainability. That means if you go for artificial intelligence, the core of the program or the tech has to be sustainable. Yeah, it needs the sustainability insight. If you go for healthcare, it needs a sustainability, sustainability insight. That means our topics and our main focus is every kind of future-oriented industries for sustainability.